Okay. Hi, Sherry. You're already there. Good morning. So I'm on YouTube because there's Sherry. Hey, Sherry. So cool. Uh -huh. Really? Oh. Cool. Siri thinks I'm talking to her. When I said Sherry, <laughs> can you hear me? Sherry, can you hear me? Say, can you put in the comments if you can hear me okay? It's I'll need to. Oh my gosh. Let's... You're telling me. Oh, wait. <laughs> you just told me. Let's get rid of her. Never mind, Siri. Never mind. Okay. I found this on the web for never mind, Siri, never mind. <laughs> Check it out. Of course, you guys. You know me. I'm going to press this and hope nothing happens. There. She went away. Nobody say S-I-R-I. -I. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Oh, great. You can hear me. Good. Crafting with Kim. Hello. It's been so long. Stephanie, hello. It's so good to be back. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. You know me and my technology. It's, uh, it's a hoot over here. <laughs> um, she's feisty today. She was thinking I was looking up somebody named Lloyd and she gave me a bunch of websites to click on. Um, so she didn't even understand what I was saying. <laughs> um, I hope you all are doing well. I have kind of reconfigured my live streams and I'm going to come on every Monday. That works out really well for my schedule. So for you, for you OGs, you um, that have been around a while, I used to come on Mondays and Wednesday afternoons and um, it was just interfering. I have a lot of um, time spent um, taking care of my mom, helping her. She no longer drives. She lives independently in a senior community, but um, like I, ha she has a doctor's appointment this afternoon and um, just to all the things. So I had to kind of rearrange my schedule. So thank you for understanding. I I have a standing 11 o'clock appointment with a um, life coaching group that I belong to. So um, I thought 10 a.m. would be good and then I'd be done, do my, do my little, my group thing, and then um, that would work out. So let's cross our fingers that I can get organized and do that. So, and, um, I just was suffering with some health issues, and I still am. Nothing major, major. Um, I had a huge case of, um, you probably know, it's probably TMI, um, but it's been so long. I wanted to get let you know, um, just kind of exhaustion and stress. Um, I had this huge case of eczema, and it was on my hands to the point that it got infected, and I, it was... It was a real thing. So I couldn't, um, I couldn't, um, show you my hands. You would have been grossed out, but, um, I think we've got that under control. Um, other things that I need to get under control, but, um, we're working on that, right? We're always working on that. Stephanie says her daughter is about to be certified as a life coach. That's awesome. That's awesome. The group I belong to is, um, called Life Mentoring School. I would recommend it. Um, it's, um, they open enrollment several times a year, but she, Dr. Edie Wadsworth, she's a, she's a, she's a physician and MD and, um, I have belonged to the group for about two years. So, um, it's well worth the money. It's a little bit of an investment, but Everything worthwhile is, right? Sherry says, hope I'm feeling better. Missed you, but totally understand the stress thing. Isn't it terrible what stress does to our bodies? I think um, it causes your blood sugar to rise, and that's another problem I'm having with high blood sugars, lots of cortisol. Um, and sometimes our medical community, I don't feel like um, they just want to give you a pill. They don't want to really help you um, correct the problem. So. 
anyway, um, I am better and I'm getting better. It's, it's a, what do you call it? It's, it's a journey, not a destination. It's a, it's a marathon, not a, not a sprint. Okay. So let's get started. Um, enough about me. I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to apologize. My desk is going to shake. Um, I I um, I ordered this morning a different um, setup so that when I'm working the whole camera won't shake and all that. So maybe by next Monday, um, I will um, everything won't shake. So I hope I don't make you sick. Sherry says you definitely have to be your own advocate. Yes, you do. And I just feel sorry for these people who like you know I help my mom a lot. She's very hard of hearing. She might be listening. She might be watching and she knows, but cause I go with her to be her extra set of ears. Um, you know, and, um, they kind of rush in and rush out, you know, they're overworked and overwhelmed. Just like, just like all of us. Okay. The first thing I wanted to say, if you're local to Kansas city, this is my card class for this coming Thursday. It's the 11th. I have one in the afternoon at 1 p.m. and then I have an evening class at 6.30. So if you're local to me, I would love to have you come, but today is the last day to register for that so that I can prepare. Tomorrow will be my cutting day. I spend all day cutting <laughs> all the pieces um, so that when you get to class, um, it's all prepared and ready for you and, and lots of fun. Um, I will put the link in the um, description when I'm done here today and it, to register for class or you can go to the plaidpoodle.com and there's a card class tab that you can click on and you just register and we'd love to have you. We're going to do these two. These are um, one of the bundles from the catalog. Um, they're interactive. I don't want to pull that because... <laughs> There's a surprise under there. I think I'm going to have to pull it from my class so they can all see what it does. But um, these are little interactive cards, and I thought they were so cute. So you pull that, and there's a little sentiment under there. And you pull that, and there's a little sentiment or a surprise under there. So that those are two. And then these two are from the Be Mine, Be My Valentine. And uh, we're going to use this suite today, but I'm going to share a technique with you that you can use with any products that you currently have. You don't have to um, uh, have this the special stamp set and punch that I'm going to use. Although, if you'd like it, I would love to sell it to you. <laughs> See, there went the shaking. Sorry about that. Um, and I'll get into the mini, the um, Monday mini class because I um, have kind of, there's a purpose for it, and I'll share that in just a minute when we get started. But I wanted to let you know, I'm sure, unless you've been living under a rock, our new catalog is live. Um, and the products I'm using today and in my class Thursday are out of the catalog. But right now, in January and February, if you place an order of $50 or more, you can pick a product out of the celebration brochure there's some really fun things I've ordered I've earned some pa papers and I've seen this paper um, the flight and airy 12 by 12 designer series paper in lots of projects it's beautiful but you can get that free with a $50 order um, just lots of things if you do not have a catalog, please private message me or message me in the comments and I'll get your contact information. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to get you some catalogs. Um, but right now, if you, um, I'll put a, I'll also put a link in the um, description. You can go view the catalogs online because who wants to wait for the snail mail? And then also right now in January and February, this is a great deal. So. I wanted to share it as well. When you join during celebration, it's $99 to join and you receive $125 worth of product. Plus right now you can get the glass mat studio and that includes this beautiful glass mat and sorry for the 
um, reflection. I haven't figured out quite how to do that. You get the little silicone, what are they calling this? It is a silicone mat. Your little Stampin' Spots fit perfectly in um, these little squares. You can, um, I'm gonna use it to put my stamp pads on so they don't slide around today. So you'll see kind of how that works a little bit. And then you also, and I forgot to get it wet. <laughs> you also get the, um, what are they calling this thing? It is called a cleaning cloth, which will clean your mat um, very nicely. It will also clean your stamps. Um, so you get all of that, plus your $125 um, kit, whatever you want to order in your kit, for $99 and free shipping. So that's option one. Option two, if you're not interested in all of this um, setup, you get to order $155 worth of product for only $99 um, and free shipping. You do have to pay tax. And that's all you have to do. There's no commitment af after the fact. Um, I'd love to chat with you about it. So uh, private message me or comment and I will get with you. Um, it's a wonderful deal. So if you have a wish list bigger than $99, um, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, like I said, it's risk-free. This QR code, um, you can just snap on that, and that will take you to the joint where you can join if you're interested. I'll, sh I'll just leave that up there for one minute. <laughs> okay, a little bit about our, my Monday mini classes. Every month, I am going to teach a technique and different ways to use that technique. And January technique is ink blending. So today we are gonna do some ink blending. We're gonna use it on this little beehive background. It's kind of a, it's, um, a stamp and resist technique as well, but we're gonna do some ink blending. It's one way to do ink blending. Um, so I just wanted to share that technique with you. And each week in January, I'll share a different um, way to use ink blending. Today, I'm using blending brushes. And I only need one brush. These are our blending brushes. You get three in a pack. These are the large ones. I tend to use the large ones most of all. But they do come two in a pack. Oops, can't get it out of uh, the small ones. This is clean, but it is stained. They will stain, but it's okay. They're tools, right? Um, this one's stained a little bit, but it's clean. I wash them when I'm done. Some people buy, buy enough for every color or every color family. I just have about five or six, seven. <laughs> And I just wash them when I'm done and they dry up really nice and, and they work the next time really good. So that's what I'm going to use today. You could also use a sponge. I think for the technique we're going to use today, the blending brush works better. Um, and then to make the card, I'll put it kind of up here. I have just taken a half a sheet of 11 by um, eight and a half. I've cut it in half at four and a fourth and then scored that at five and a half to create my card base. This card is pretty simple, but we're going to do a couple of little different techniques or I'm going to share a couple of little tips um, to kind of break it out of the box a little bit. Um, and then I've cut a piece of crushed curry. This piece measures um, five and a fourth by four. So it's, uh, what is that? A fourth of an inch smaller than the card front. And I'm just gonna center it right on the front. It's just a simple layer to add some interest. And it also kind of ties back to what we're going to do with our ink. And then um, this, 
this um, third layer is a three and three quarter, I think by five, three and three quarter by five of basic white. And I'm using one of our um, basic 3D embossing folder. It's kind of a crosshatch pattern. I thought that looked kind of like a, a beehive. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, it's very windy outside and the bushes outside my window keep um, keep brushing up against the window. So if you hear some scratching, that's not my dogs, which is usually my dogs, but it's not my dogs. Uh, we're getting ready, I guess, for a winter storm. <laughs> a winter, we, we're under a, a winter storm advisory. Um, I think my son teaches, and he said last week they really were um, emphasizing, administration was really emphasizing the virtual classroom, get ready for virtual classroom, so he thinks uh, maybe school will be called off tomorrow because <laughs> it's supposed to snow tonight. I am going to do this um, embossing folder over here on the edge so the table doesn't... Um, shake too much. Oh, St. Carol, you are from St. Jo I thought you were going to say St. Joseph, Missouri, which is right up the road from us, but you are St. Joseph, Michigan, along the shores of Lake Michigan. Oh, I bet it's beautiful there. And you're expecting snow, too. Um, I guess you're used to that. <laughs> I would say where you live, you probably get some snow. Um, last few years, we, we haven't really got a whole heck of a lot. So we'll see. You know, they act like it's, it's the end of the world here in Kansas City every time there's some snow in the forecast. <laughs> um, hi, Jackie. Yay! Jackie um, just joined Stampin' Up! Um, last week, last Thursday. So, okay, now I'm taking one of the largest circle from the um, Stylish Shapes dies, and I'm just going to cut a window out of this embossed piece of cardstock. And we are going to die cut that out. Kim, aren't you in Florida? Crafting with Kim. So I, I would be a little concerned if snow is heading your way. <laughs> that might be a little bit more of an emergency situation than here. We're a little more prepared. I don't know why I think you live in Florida. I could be totally mistaken. <laughs> Stephanie, I caught the embossing folder. I had the embossing folder right on top of the plates. I need to tell you guys a funny story. Uh, my sister was visiting, um, maybe I told this, and she's also a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. She's an old close to my, no, not close to my heart, um, creative memories person. She's a big scrapbooker. And she was here, and we were um, crafting um, together one evening and just kind of having a good time. And she actually ran some dies through my mini without using the top plate. She forgot to put the top plate on. And let me tell you what will happen. If it's a small die, because it was a small die, it rolled up into the um, mini. So, the, and it's still there, and the mini still works. So, um, another reason not to drink wine and craft at the same time. <laughs> I don't know. We were just not paying attention. Florida, you do live in Florida. It's just yucky weather headed your way. I think it's that way all over. Okay, so that's kind of basic, the basic pieces for the card. So we've got the card base, the layer, and then the window piece. 
So using whatever you have to do that. <laughs> um, then for our fun technique that I was going to share today, we have a piece of, I think it's three and a fourth by three and a fourth. Yep. Um, basic white card stock. And I am going to take my, we're going to do some heat embossing, which is always fun. I'm going to take my embossing buddy, which is an anti-static tool. It just kind of takes the static off so your embossing powder doesn't um, stick to everything. And I'm using white embossing powder. And you need Versamark ink to do this. And then I'm taking from the Be My Valentine stamp set the little um, honeycomb image. And this, I was going to show you, you can set your um, stamp pads here and they don't slide all over the place on this uh, silicone mat. This is really kind of nice. I think you can even blend your inks in this little square. I'm kind of afraid to because I, I don't want to, um, what do you call it? I don't want to stain it. <laughs> I want to keep it nice. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to use my, these are photopolymer stamps, so I always like to use my um, Stampin' paper piercing mat, just to give it a little cushion. And then I'm just randomly stamping. It's, you probably can't see, I can hardly see. Um, but I... I'm just randomly stamping over this little three and a fourth by three and a fourth inch piece of paper. Now we're going to grab a fancy piece of scrap and then I'm going to just dump white embossing powder. I'm a dumper. <laughs> Some of the people in my classes, they don't dump. They just very nicely um, sprinkle, but I just dump it. I want it everywhere. And now I'm going to use my tweezers. Can you see the pattern? I could have done a little better, but I think it'll be okay because we're going to put our little B over top. So this is white embossing powder. I think you could have used clear embossing powder, but I really wanted the um, the hive to show once we put the ink over it, or the honeycomb. Kim G says, I think it's starting here and then heading out to everyone else in different forms of yucky weather. Yeah, well, it's winter. What do we expect? Okay, now I'm going to heat this up. I apologize for the noise. And I'm using a heat tool. Heat it up a little bit. It's kind of a reach. The cord is a little bit of a reach to my desk here. And it's starting to melt. I don't know if you can tell if the camera could set up. But it kind of turns from that gray white into kind of a shiny white. I love heat embossing. Okay, we're going to use that again here in a minute. So can you see? It's a little shinier. I don't know if the camera or the lights can pick that up. 
Now we're going to take that crushed curry ink, or it may be Daffodil Delight. Looks like I have Daffodil, oh no, here's the crushed curry. I thought I wanted to use crushed curry. I kind of wanted it to have that deeper yellow, so I it was a debate between crushed curry or Daffodil Delight, so I chose crushed curry. Now here is the blending. You're just going to put a little bit on your blending brush. If you're using a stamp and sponge or a sponge, um, the same thing. And then here's the beauty of the glass mat. I can just go from, I can just do it right on top of the glass mat. I don't have to get a scrap paper. And I hope I have a Kleenex around or something. I always start off of the paper to avoid kind of a you know, when you first put that down, it it's darker than, see like right there it came in darker, but I think that's okay. I think that looks neat too. I'm looking for a Kleenex really quick. It's not um, necessary. Isn't that pretty? Um, I, and I had a little rag around here somewhere. Oh, here we go. I'll just use this little rag. Once you're done, you can kind of polish that embossed area. Again, I apologize for the shaking. I'm going to try and fix that before next week. I ordered a different configuration for my camera. It kind of cleans off um, and makes it shiny again. So, kind of brings it out is what I'm trying to say. We're going to heat emboss these little hearts. I'm going to show you how to make your own little shiny embellishments using stamps. Okay, now I'm going to adhere this to the back of the window. So I just want the tiniest bit of glue. Um, I'm just going to put a little stream of glue. This is multi-purpose liquid glue. This is one of my favorite little Amazon finds. Everyone who came to my Christmas party got one of these because <laughs> it's one of my favorite finds. You get 12 in a package. They're not very expensive, and they never clog. I've had the worst trouble with uh, glue applicators clogging. Kim G says she always forgets about this technique. I know, right? Okay, it's kind of, it's called an embossed resist and I'm using ink blending because that's our January technique. So we blended some ink on that paper and then I'm just gonna glue this down right on top of the card front. And I probably should take the ink off the um, glass mat if I had gotten this wet before we started, this is the perfect thing to clean it off. No harm. I didn't get any on the back of the card. But if I did, who cares? It's homemade. It just says, made with love. <laughs> so that cleans up really nice. I'm going to use this to dry it real quick. All right, now we can glue it on the card front. I think I didn't really get it centered centered, so I'm going to put it this way. Stephanie bought those bottles too and shared with her friends. I put different glue in the bottles and labeled them. Oh, that's a good idea. I just have always had trouble with these little tips uh, clogging and with these bottles. Uh, my friend and fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator, Betty Holton, uh, turn me on to these. They never, they never um, stop up. So I just put my multi-purpose liquid glue in here. 
um, it came with a funnel. You got 12 of these in a funnel, but the funnel was kind of a mess. I just squeezed it in there. I didn't think the funnel was that good. And I've got this on here a little crooked. I'm going to see if I can slide it over, but it's, it's set, so we're going to leave it a little crooked. It's not too noticeable. This down here is kind of bothering me a little bit, but we'll put all of our fun stuff on there and it'll be okay. <laughs> I can put a link um, in the description, Kim, um, uh, my Amazon link. I don't get money for it. I, I don't have an affiliate set up with them, but um, I'd be happy to share that with you. I don't think I have an affiliate. All right, now we just need some, um, I'm going to use this piece and we're going to use the Bee Builder Punch. So I always try and pay attention to how the paper goes inside the punch. So I want my little bee tail to go that way. <laughs> and I'm using the, uh, the body and the little stripes. We need the wings, we need black ink, and here's the sentiment. Here's the little hearts we're going to do in a minute. So, and again, I'm going to grab my, I just get a better impression. I might have a guide here. Let me see. No, I didn't save it. I made a guide where you can just stamp all of them and do them all at once, but um, I must have pitched it. If you were mass producing these, you might want to... I think I'm going to do the leaves, or the, the leaves. They look like leaves. The wings first, just so I save some of my paper. I'm going to kind of do that. And we'll, let's, let's go ahead and punch those out. I do it upside down like this, just so I can see um, what's happening. There's my wings. Now I'm going to... Can you tell I'm out of practice doing this? I feel very awkward. I'm very, uh, I've been stamping and card making all during this time away, but, um, and I did that wrong because I want this to be yellow. It, it doesn't feel um, natural right now. I'm sure we'll get there. Maybe by July. There's his little body. Now we're ready for the memento. Oh, it's raining outside. I hope it's not going to ice. I have to take my mom to the doctor this afternoon, Claire across town. And I said, I don't think it's going to start till the evening, so let's just keep the appointment. We'll see. Okay, and then I've got this cute little face. I use the smiley face. I think it comes with a wink, smiley face, and kind of um, closed eyes, open eyes, and I thought there was kind of a snarky face but I guess not. That was something else. <laughs> All right, then we're gonna punch this out. And look, I did it again. No, I didn't.
There we go. Was there a snarky face? You're right. Okay, Stephanie's the professional. I knew there was a snarky face. Because <laughs> I used it for something. I said, oh, he looks kind of angry. Okay, so I'm just going to glue this little bee, his wings on here. He's kind of in flight, right? Are you guys honey lovers? Do you like honey? Do you use honey? I like honey and tea kind of as a, if I'm having a hot cup of tea, I'll use honey, but I don't really use honey a whole lot. I use it in recipes probably more than. Okay. Then we just need the sweet sorbet ink for our sentiment. There's the card. And I need another piece of scrap for that. Ooh, warm biscuits. Yes, definitely warm biscuits. Oh my gosh. This is a steakhouse that has um, the honey butter. Oh my gosh. So good. We're going to use that for our hearts here in a minute. Yeah, they say the local um, honey is better for people. I've heard that, Kim. Kim says they love local honey. It helps our allergies. I'm going to trim just a tad off of here. Everything's flying. So we can put that on our card. And I'm using dimensionals for those. And I did that backwards. So we'll do that again. <laughs> we'll do it on the back. Because it's a little, when you do the B body, it's a little, what do you call that? A conversation. Um, what do I do with the stamp? There we go. Conversation bubble. You could use that for a lot of different um, cards that you wanted a com conversation bubble on. All right. So our little bee is flying through the hive here. This is most definitely a Valentine set, but it can also be used year-round, in my opinion. Um, what else do we have on here? You'll always be the one for me. I love you no matter what. You're sweet as honey. We've got some really cute flowers. Let's see. Did one of my samples use the flowers? Nope. All right, now I'm going to show you one more little technique or tip to kind of make your own little um, embellishments. There is some embellishments in this suite. They look like this. There's little flowers, stars, and hearts. They're epoxy, so they're kind of shiny. But I'm going to show you how to make kind of your own using the um, clear embossing powder. So I'm going to take the heart stamp and we'll just take a scrap of paper because I already made some up so I you don't have to watch me do the whole sh shebang. <laughs> if I can find them. Here they are. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how I did it. So I took the sweet sorbet and because these are... Um, Go to polymer stamps. We can see through them. So let's say we're going to do three hearts. Um, you want to clean your stamp so you don't mess up your Versamark um, pad. Okay. 
and we're going to get our little white piece of paper back because we're going to sprinkle this with clear embossing powder. So the two embossing powders I used today were from the basics. I think you get black, white, and clear. And then I'm just going to stamp right over top of those hearts with this Versamark. And we're just going to make them shiny. So here's the clear. Remember I said I'm a dumper. <laughs> I want to make sure they're good and covered. And then when you heat them up, I'll go ahead and heat them up. It won't take a sec. If I can find my tweezer. They'll get all shiny. I don't know if the camera shows that, but that clear embossing, there we go, that clear embossing powder melted right on top of there and made it real shiny, look kind of like an enamel dot. And then you can just punch that out with um, the punch. I'm not going to do all three because I already did some. And also, this little heart shape um, works for his little antenna. Here's one with the antenna. This will be easier. See the little antenna? That little heart shape in the punch works for that little antenna. So that was cool that Stampin' Up! did that. Carol loves the clear embossing hearts. I know. I was trying to... I was going to use the little these little things. But I have classes on Thursday. I don't know where the packet of them are. Um, and I didn't want to run out <laughs> because um, today's the last day to register. So if I have several people register, I need all my, all my things. And I said, well, how can I embellish this? So I thought, you know what? I can make my own little shiny hearts. So um, you can do that with any image. Um, use that technique with that Versamark and the clear embossing powder. You can even do that with um, stamp sentiments. Um, I would use <clears throat> a stamp placement tool um, if you were going to do it with a sentiment. Or um, it doesn't work as well, but you can, let's say we were going to do this sentiment, this You Make My Heart Buzz. I could stamp this in the Versamark first, then the ink pad, and then stamp it on and pour the embossing powder over it, and it would it would work on the sentiment. Um, that would be the best way so you don't get it, um, what do you call it? Blurry. You don't want a blurry sentiment. <laughs> Stampin' Up! used to carry all of our colors when I joined over 10 years ago. You could get every color, I think, um, of embossing powder. So I could have gotten um, the Sweet Sorbet, and I loved it when they did that. <laughs> I missed that. But you, there is a workaround. By using, just stamp in the Versamark first, then in your ink pad. Stamp it onto your page <clears throat> and then sprinkle with the embossing powder. Yep. So there's our little hearts. And that's our card. Isn't that fun? So now I already have two <laughs> um, lovey-dovey cards. I'll probably send these to some of my grandkids maybe. Um, 
these are two we're gonna make Thursday. So here's using the same um, the same um, bundle. It's the stamp and the punch go together. You can buy them separate, but why would you? <laughs> um, and I'll have all the information of the products I used in the description. Um, and then also remember to use the um, ink blending and the embossed resist on your projects. Maybe you um, have something that you can use that technique on um, in your own craft collection. Next week I'm sharing another ink blending um, technique. We'll be using the blending brushes as well um, and a little bit of masking. So uh, next Monday at 10 a.m. Central. Carol is 19 years into Stampin' Up! Wow! That's awesome, Carol. Hey, Debbie! I didn't see you hop in there. How are you? Good to see you. I missed everyone. Did I miss saying hello to anyone? Let's look. This has been fun, and I'm sorry it was a little awkward. It's been... Oh, hi, Dawn! I missed you. How are you? Thanks for joining. I said hello to Jackie, Sherry, and Kim. Thank you, ladies, so much. Um, and if you're watching the replay, I love you, too. Um, that's it. Also, if you're local, don't forget today's the last day to sign up for the card class on Thursday so I can get those cut out for you tomorrow. Um, we will... See you next week. If you have any questions or, or comments, um, just, just reach out and let me know. And um, we'll talk soon. Happy stamping, guys. Bye-bye.